we can also see the moment when the first elements were created. If our television is not tuned to a station, a tiny fraction of the noise is radiation from 13 billion years ago. But this radiation is not the only reminder of the birth of the universe. Even the water we drink is a memento. And it's kind of amazing to think that every time we take a drink of a glass of water, we're drinking in atoms that have been around since the Big Bang, the hydrogen atoms. Over the next millions of years, the young universe continued to expand, cool, and get dark again. So far, the universe had only made hydrogen and helium atoms. But the world we live in is made from more than a hundred different kinds of elements. Without them, the universe would remain a very boring place, made up of only gas, a place where complex matter, like planets, cars, and people, could never develop. The universe needed to get hydrogen and helium atoms to fuse. And to do that, it needed to make stars. The universe was now 200 million years old and billions of light years across. Its temperature had dropped so far that it was colder than liquid nitrogen, minus 367 degrees Fahrenheit. It was also dark. It would have remained a very gloomy place, full of gas, but without galaxies, stars, or planets, if it hadn't been for one thing. The baby universe wasn't born perfect. Carlos Frank has created an amazing 3D simulation of how the early universe evolved. It shows that when the universe emerged from the Big Bang, it was uneven. Little cracks appeared, which were very, very, very tiny, very, very small. And it was this rash in the face of the baby universe that later developed into the patterns that we see in the galaxies today. Without these cracks, the universe would have been a very dull place. The first clues as to how these cracks developed into galaxies and stars came when other scientists started to examine the Big Bang radiation first discovered by Penzias and Wilson. So what Penzias and Wilson saw was this radiation was, as far as they can tell, uniform. What cosmologists then did for the next 25 years was work very hard to try to find tiny variations. And find them they did, using WMAP, a space probe designed to detect and analyze in detail variations in the background microwave radiation. Launched in 2001, the $150 million probe was fitted with some of the most sensitive instruments ever carried into space. Our eyes detect only visible starlight. But WMAP can tune into the invisible microwave radiation. Once in orbit around the sun, it picked up the faint radiation that has been rippling around the universe since the dawn of time. So when we look at the cosmic background radiation, we're looking at this radiation that's been streaming towards us since half a million years after the Big Bang. Initially, the microwave universe looked very dull and seemed to be the same everywhere. But when WMAP turned up contrast, the results were spectacular. The baby universe wasn't smooth and boring at all. It was full of fluctuations. These tiny fluctuations tell us what the variations in density, how much stuff there is, and, and how it varies from place to place. These denser regions are going to collapse to form uh, clusters of galaxies and superclusters and galaxies themselves. These low density regions, these will uh, grow and become the empty regions between galaxies. So this picture really is our connection between the universe when it was a baby, half a million years old, to the universe today, 13.7 billion years old. These tiny imperfections in the fledgling universe would become galaxies and stars. And this is one of the most amazing propositions in physics. The idea that galaxies like the Milky Way that contain 100 million stars 
once began life as a tiny little crack in the fabric of the universe. The material in these cracks was filled with swirling clouds of hydrogen atoms. The voids between the clouds grew bigger and bigger. The gas clouds got denser and hotter. Gravity pulled the gas clouds together on filaments, like beads on threads of a web, cosmic web. Where the giant filaments formed large globs, stars and galaxies would grow. As the universe evolved, gases were able to condense into clouds, which collapsed to form stars. The stars settled into a rotating disk that was later to become a spiral galaxy like the Milky Way. Over millions of years, the hydrogen atoms clumped together and heated up. The atoms began fusing and releasing energy, and the gas clouds started to burn brightly. Eventually, a star was born. All over the universe, millions of stars ignited for the first time. The appearance of the first stars would have been a truly spectacular event. Had we been there, we would have really seen fireworks. Individual, enormous flashes of light generated as the stars are born and burn themselves out. The universe has expanded many trillions of times its original size. It was full of newborn stars made of hydrogen and helium. These young stars were nothing like our own sun. They were very unstable. But it was their instability that would make the universe a more interesting place. Because deep inside each new star, something amazing was happening. They were creating new elements. The idea that stars build atoms came from the British astrophysicist Sir Fred Hoyle one of the greatest astronomers of the 20th century. Hoyle didn't believe that the universe began in a single explosion. In fact, he coined the name Big Bang as a term of derision. Hoyle wanted to know where the elements heavier than hydrogen and helium came from. He figured out that stars acted like nuclear reactors, working a bit like a hydrogen bomb in slow motion. but many billion times more powerful. And their nuclear waste was new elements. But it would take years before scientists were able to confirm his theory by analyzing the light from stars. Each element emits a light at a particular frequency when heated up. Imagine a sodium street lamp. It emits light of a yellow color specific to sodium. It's the same with stars. Take our sun. If you break the light down into a spectrum, you can see lines like a barcode corresponding to the elements. Each element has specific colors, helping scientists identify elements like hydrogen, which emits mainly red light. We are go for main In 1990, NASA launched the Hubble Space Telescope to unravel some of the mysteries of our early universe. And lift off of the Space Shuttle Discovery with the Hubble Space Telescope, our window on the universe. Hubble promised scientists unprecedented views of the young universe. 